Silva out cold. He got silly. He didn't respect his opponent. And he paid for it with his consciousness. Wow. Seven head strikes and counting. It's it. it is it's all it. over. Luke Rockhold is the new UFC middleweight champion of the world. Flying knee. He knocked him out. What is it that probably even keeps people in the sport? I think it's the love of performing in one way or another. It's you think of rock stars, you know, it's like Aerosmith, you know, <laughs> they're doing it in like the freaking eighties. I suppose the difference though is though, like uh, Steven Tyler isn't going on the stage and smacking a guitar over his head is it? like every night. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I mean, then you've got pro wrestling example. I know people don't necessarily like that, but you got Ric Flair when he's like ninety and has, you know, is probably on dialysis at this point. You know, it's like. Uh, people love performing in front of other people. People love adoration. I think at the core of it, unnecessarily deep answer, we're a social species. And when you have that kind of love and support en masse from 18,000 people, cr you know, crammed into a stadium to watch you fight, it's very emotional decision. I feel like it's not logical whatsoever. I think nobody can really say that for you. At the end of the day, you're a grown man. You can do whatever the hell you want to do. Misha Tate can return after five years away. She ended up getting a win in that case, and she's gotten a win since then, but she's had also some bad losses since she, coming she, back. I, I, but you could argue as well, she ha hasn't had the devastating post-championship career that someone like Chris Weidman has had. I don't think she stuck around long enough, and now we're kind of kind of see if she is going to stick around long enough. The, the Ketlin Vieira loss was pretty brutal. Uh, obviously not as brutal as like yeah well or you know you're right hall but yeah i feel like we might see if she gets to that exposure point now i i think it's a rock and a hard place because if you're the promoter and you kick them out what are they going to do they're going to go honestly to bellator they're going to go to one championship would you, gracie fought like five years ago you would know? you watch chris weidman in, in a bellator or pfl though I did not now. watch Kimbo and Ken Shamrock. I did not watch Ken Shamrock and Hoist Gracie. I did not watch those fights. Yeah. I saw them on social media after the fact. And to this day, I've still not watched them all the way through because I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I know a lot of people do and they want to see those legends and they just kind of want to see some crazy shit. I think, you know, to a certain extent, I want to see Bob Sapp versus No Gare again as well. You know, I, I understand. I just don't fall in the spectrum of wanting to see people just continually fuck their lives up. Earlier when we were talking about, you think Bruno Silva's going to fuck up Chris Whiteman? Yeah. Yeah, well, Bruno Silva's in it. He's active. And he's like, I don't know Bruno's age, but he has very competitive fights all the time. And he's kind of one of those guys that goes in there to finish or be finished. And yeah, and he's a, a, a really good stand-up fighter. Obviously, he has the ground game as well, but... Chris couldn't even get there with, with Tavares. And Tavares is, is known as that store, that division, that guy that's stopping you getting into the rankings. But I know no one comes back off that leg break and looks good. It's just too, I think it's too much. And it's too much in your brain of like, if I kick this guy, last time I kicked someone like this, it fucking broke yeah. my... You're going to worry about doing that. And uh, maybe not with, maybe throwing punches, you're worried about you're going to break your wrist or you might break a thumb or, or something like that. You're just thinking, oh, fuck, I'm fragile nowadays. If, if, you're, if your wife and children see you, see that leg snap happen to you, I watched it quite recently as well. That's why I was grimacing. Yeah. Like, oh, wow. It is, it's way worse than Anderson Silver's leg break. It's like as nasty as, as Anderson's was, the way that it kind I of think flicked it's up and it broke the tip of it. Like Chris Wyman's is fucking disgusting disgusting the way that he broke that and having watched your dad go through that or your husband go through that wouldn't you just be like dad what the fuck man like what are you doing like you have this gym with longo 
invest your time into the contenders and the new guys that come up that have the passion that the fire that you had on the way up and now probably now's the time to transition it's like the thing that we praise them for when they're younger yeah, yeah. it's this bullheadedness yeah i'm not just going to be good at something and so you have to have this bullheadedness it's almost like if you're going to be a championship level fighter it's almost like a built-in function and then suddenly it becomes bad it, it literally does turn on a dime. Like one day your chin goes out. Dream's over. It's a physical impossibility. You get hit with a jab, you're done. You know, we saw that with Chuck. I think that's the biggest thing. It's just like nobody can make that decision for them. That's why they keep doing it. If you're the gym owner, you're the coach, it, to them it looks like you're abandoning them. Why don't you believe in me? It starts to look like that. If you're the promoter, I'll just go somewhere else. If you're the family members is probably even more personal you know it i think it depends on the individual i think some people are more realistic than others but in general yeah this doggedness i'm going to be the best on the planet and that, yeah. that's the thing it depends on your mentality going back after everything chris has been through to then go back and be like i can still be the best but it doesn't feel like that and that's worrying because his last showing didn't look good and that may be some rust that may be a lot of nerves but yeah, it doesn't inspire you to, to look forward to Chris's next fight. And then obviously on that note as well, um, in the news recently, Nick Diaz posted a picture of him on the heavy bag, you know, swinging away as he has done uh, in many fights of the past, saying, you know, anyone could get it, insinuating that he's ready for a Actually return. Actually looks in shape this time, though. Looks in shape, but like based upon that last fight again with Robbie Lawler and the fact that like you know when Nick Diaz was at his prime it was legitimately 10 years ago more than 10 years ago now what's the incentive there for other than you know obviously the personal incentive for himself but for like the fans and for the sport that those guys come back and they have a showing I'm not the target audience yeah exactly I'm, I'm just not I, I, you, I, you are though because there's no new fan that is looking forward to that I think or, that, or wouldn't have the same respect for well, Nick not as, all older fans like the same thing you know the, every, I think people get into the sport for different reasons you know it's like I'm one of those weirdly meritocratic people where I like to see the best fight the best and that's a big motivation for me I think everybody likes that to an extent and then I think on a spectrum I like to see freak show fights but I don't generally like to see a pointless version of that at least pointless in my mind I think people's interests are all over kind of the gamut I think there are newer fans who are also interested in Nate Diaz's brand Brother. I'll tell you what though, I was astounded about the level of support for Nick prior to that fight. And there was that infamous interview where he went on Helwani's oh, yeah. show and he was clearly intoxicated to, to some degree. But f there were loads of fans at that time. No, that's just Nick. It and it's just not. like, I feel like they have a weird fucking perverted perception <laughs> of what Nick is and was. And like, that fight with Robbie Lawler, what he was doing and how he was doing, and he looked so slow. And people were, I remember at the time, people were going like, oh, this is cl this is textbook classic Nick Diaz. I'm like, what the fuck are you guys watching? Like, this is an old man. But yeah, at half speed being beaten up by Robbie Lawler and then just sort of giving up. And people were like celebrating it. I would have never thought I'd ever see a Nick Diaz fight where he gave up. Yeah. But that's what he yeah. did. Well, there was there was all yeah. those little interviews and sound bites and stuff saying he like he doesn't know why he's there. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not really sure why I'm fighting. I'm not why I'm doing. It. He doesn't want to do it, and he's kind of just went in there because that's what you like. It's kind of that street attitude that everyone likes about them. Is like, oh, I'm fighting now, so I've got to fight. But yeah, get, coming back, looking out of shape because he was injured. Um, you know, moving up a weight class and just looking slow and a shadow of his former self. Mm. That's the only reason you could say, maybe, yeah, do one more, or like a classic retro fight, match him someone accordingly and have him come in fit and try to look a little bit like the Diaz of old. That could be fun. But that's the only reason I would say you could do another new Nick Diaz fight to, was, to get rid of that last memory. Because that's the thing. Da Dana White uh, came out on a podcast recently and he was talking specifically about the Jake Paul Mike Tyson fight. He goes, No, I don't like seeing guys our age go out and, and, and fight and it just does nothing does nothing for me and it's just like well dude you're booking bj Penn over and over again to lose you're booking in my opinion chris weidman it's a difficult one isn't it because he's he's really on the precipice of like 
something really bad going wrong. Having watched his the second half of his career go the way that it has done and the injuries he's sustained, I don't see the benefit for the fans. Does anyone want to watch Chris Weidman in 2024? I think people will say they do, but what they mean is they want to see a redemption arc. Yeah, you, they want to but see they don't want to see him lose. And they, we, we also, like, if you were to ask somebody who do you think is going to win, they might optimistically say Chris Weidman, but do you really think that? Like, um, obviously, I do think he can beat Bruno Silva. I mean, it, it is probably a 50-50 fight, but with everything else behind it, I think you start to lean more towards Bruno Silva. Is Bruno Silva the caliber of Chris Weidman in his best days? I think that's what people are kind of holding on to in that instance. I would love to be proven wrong. Yeah. I would love more than anything to show that, okay, yeah, this is an ethical thing. Chris Weidman does still have it. Yeah. He's back and he puts on great fights and he has this George Foreman like resurgence <laughs> yeah. later on in life that no one predicts. Yeah. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing to see for a fan favorite, somebody I, you know, have always been a big fan of. I would love to see that. There's it never happens, you know? Because I think the reason why the last loss was so bad is because, <laughs> I know it doesn't necessarily make sense, but it's because Tavares kicked the legs off him. And Wyman was shattered. <laughs> and he was just, he stayed alive in there just for pure heart and will. And all the commentary were like, this is awful. What are we watching? <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's, it's just like wincing with every leg kick. So when you watch, so you, you're Dana White or you're Sean Shelby or Dana whoever, White, you, watch, you watch those, you watch that fight and you go, yeah, let's stick him in there. Let's book him in there. <laughs> let's book him there with another kickboxer. Yeah, yeah exactly. let's do that. He's ready for another fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, in terms of the brutality, though, it's like, you know, if you don't like kick him, you end up on one of those highlight reels of low IQ moments yeah. when you're, you know, Andre Sukumtat fighting O'Malley and you have every opportunity to beat him, but you refuse to keep it standing even though you're destroying him. I, I think it kind of turns into that. So it's like, if you're Brad Tavares, you're there to win. Yeah. But that, 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 that's something Chris is going to have to deal with. Every fight he goes into now, everyone's going to target his legs because they think that there's a possibility yeah. well, Anderson, something might come I loose. I mean, it happened to Anderson Silva as well against uh, Cannoneer. Like, didn't Cannoneer check a kick? He wobbled and fell back and that was the that was the end of that fight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that was. That was in Brazil, yeah. But yeah, you go through something like that as well. That's why, you know, it's it's a scary place for Conor McGregor to be in as well. Like, if if uh, he comes back, it's it's just a, it's just a free-for-all, isn't it? It's like, right, let's go for the fucking legs. But even though it's reinforced with steel, is it ever going to... Is that yeah. bone marrow ever going to be 100% perfect? It's like your brain is subconsciously on a nervous system level trying to protect you from fucking yourself up again. Yeah, exactly. I think, yeah, yeah you realise you're you're fragile and you're, that you are actually human. I'd just be really interested to hear what most people watching this would think as well. It's just like, are they interested in seeing a 2024 Chris Weidman fight again and specifically this weekend on the card that maybe not a lot of people are going to tune in to watch i think they're probably like three distinct camps they're the ones that used to love them are a bit more realistic about it probably doesn't have a chance they're the ones that are optimistic about it and they're the other ones that just want to watch the world burn <laughs> like they're just like yeah whatever he wants to keep fighting you would have to be a savage to not look at chris fondly and not want him to do well yeah. like if you just if you can watch the card knowing who chris is and then just watch him as like, oh, he's just another contender. Yeah. And then see him get butchered and, and not feel terrible about it. Like you have to be someone else to not not feel for the guy because yeah. he's really trying. It's just he is up against a set of circumstances that don't look well for him. I think what we're saying is, Chris Weidman, please do well yeah, yeah. because you're a legend. But on the other end, we're calloused MMA fans. It's not nine times out of ten. It's ninety nine times out of a hundred. This is what happens to the older fighter. They devastatingly lose and everyone's Just like, well, all right. Squeezing every last drop out of that old man. Yeah. And, you know, get that blood and sweat, that last blood and sweat out of Chris Wilder. And that's it's dodgy booking as well because, like, even though Bruno Silva is game. Yeah. He's ha he's had uh, not great success recently. I think he's on a couple. Yeah, he's a two-fight losing skid. So it's kind of like you're just against some guy. And it's just like, okay, it's not like a, a Robbie Law situation where someone's getting given a chance or like a Jim Miller where it's like, this is your step up. Yeah. It's kind of like, oh, here's some guy also on the well, lost Jim streak. Jim Miller has kind of been booked really well, nicely for a long time. Hasn't yeah, he? But he went on a run of just ah, fighting nobodies. That's like Jim the Miller. definition of the He's fought Bruno Silva level guys and done well. But in regards to Jim, some of Jim's fights, you're just like, he who, fought Donald Cerrone. <laughs> who, who, who is that? Jim Miller, yeah. I'm a believer in. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that <laughs> is I think the, he's almost done though. He's like yeah. closing the I door. Mean, if Chris, 
in a if, graceful way. Yeah, definitely. I think G- Jim's career is fascinating in that sense, but it's almost kind of like like Dana has a special. It's like let's get him to the, all well, those fights. That's and, the ultimate nostalgia booking. It's like yeah. realistically, why just, on, why on earth is Jim on three hundred? Yeah, because he was on one hundred and he was on two hundred. So like, fuck it, we love Jim fucking Miller. Like, there's what? a huge crowd support behind it. Oh like, yeah, it, I think I there's also it. that the money yeah. side of it too. But like, why aren't they booking someone like Chris Wyburn like that? If if it's nostalgia booking, why aren't they giving Chris Wyburn guys that he can be? to make himself self feel better, but you're also kind of protecting him as well, rather than putting him in against a guy that has fought Pereira, gone three rounds with Pereira. When you do look at someone like Jim Miller as well, like, yes, he has had some tough fights, but like, oh, yeah. if, if you were to go through names that Jim Miller has fought, everyone, in the last, in the last, let's say, like two years. Some of them were pretty good. Some of them were pretty good. Some of them were absolute fucking no. Jim's always got a, a left hook waiting for someone at any time. A uh, Jesse Butler, Nicholas Motta, Eric Gonzalez. Why can't we give... I know Jim was never at the level of Chris, but like, why can't we do that for our fighters? Why can't... If we do have guys out there that want to continue to fight... Why don't we just match them up a lot kinder? Why do why do you have to sacrifice BJ Penn to Yair Rodriguez? <laughs> why do you need to why does there need to be such a sacrifice in the cage? Why can't we all just look at Chris Weidman at what he is? Is a legend of the sport that has iconic moments and fucking just tee the guy up. Give him a happy ending. If he could go on a three-fight w- win streak against a guy who's had two fights in LFA and then retire, we'd all be happy, <laughs> wouldn't we? It doesn't matter who Chris Weidman beats. To play devil's advocate, the reason you book BJ Penn against Yair is if you're like on the UFC and you're like, this guy's been pestering us forever, saying he's top level, he can make a championship run. It's like, all right, big boy, go back in there. And if you lose, Yair gets to beat a big name and that gives him a boost. But so is that, not, just, is that not punishing BJ Penn though for gassing himself up? Well, if he's right, he's right. And then yeah. it is punishing him absolutely because yeah. it's like, leave us the fuck alone. <laughs> yeah. It's just interesting then, like that makes perfect sense. But then when you book someone against Bruno Silva, who's on a two fight losing streak, it's like, who, why? Why think, have you done this to him? I think the excuse there is like, we get to put Weidman on a main card on TV. People tune in ratings. Unless, um, unless you think Weidman can beat him. But then I don't think the UFC are over that person. I think Weidman should be getting the guys that Bo Nickel is getting. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> guys should come in on a week's notice from yeah. a random just obscure promotion. Give him Val Woodburn every week. Val Woodburn, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just give him a, 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 a vow, you know. Yeah. Let's do it. So you might not care about Chris Weidman, but what you might care about is the channel membership. Re- yeah. No. Yeah. You're right. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> and you might care about that because you can get this uncut podcast yeah. for two ninety nine. Which is great, isn't it? It's an excellent deal. So that's something you really care about. Yeah. Good time. (laughs) 